good cup of joe. fishy friends and welcome back to another stay fishy adventure today i got a good one in store for you we're out in the desert and we're going to do some stuff that we have never done before i got the kayaks behind me i got a little man in the back seat and a whole weekend full of adventure coming up here first and foremost i want to say thank you so much for being here today everybody i love that you guys are loving these videos so i want to see some comments below throughout the video of what you think of what we're doing interact with the video be sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up if you haven't already let's go have an adventure So first thing on the docket for today, we're going fly fishing and we're going in my brand new kayak. I got these old town kayaks not too long ago and they are some of the most badass little crafts. You guys are gonna see how versatile they are. And today is just mainly to go out and have fun on these lakes and catch a few fish on the fly, teach you guys a couple things about fly fishing. Um, but on the way there, we have an absolutely incredible drive. We're going through a huge canyon over here in Eastern Oregon. And so I'm gonna fly the drone up and follow the truck up, let you guys see the beautiful view that we're witnessing here. So I hope you enjoy it, let's do it. So I had to stop and share this amazing view with you guys. We're cruising up through this canyon, almost to the spot where we're gonna fish, and look at what we found. Look at this place. We are on top of the world right now. Such a beautiful spring morning. It really feels like winter is almost over here in the Pacific Northwest. And I love coming out here in the desert, especially in the early spring like this, because where we are is a high desert. We're, we're about three to 4,000 feet above sea level. It's all sagebrush and, and grasslands for as far as you can see. But also why I wanted to stop here is look at how cool this rock formation is. I'm really not sure what we're looking at here, but these almost look like thunder eggs. It's kind of got me, kind of got me jonesing to maybe go out and look for some thunder eggs, but this is a obviously a really cool formation. It's got all these rocks just kind of encased in this like dirt, almost this clay, where you can just kind of peel them right out of there. Super duper interesting. They don't look super duper special, but cool no less. But I just wanted to share this with you guys. We're almost to the lakes. I got my fix, let's go fishing. Great outdoors! Yeah. Ah, uh, look at that man, the great outdoors, huh? Yeah, great outdoors. Yeah. And we've made it to the beautiful Trout Lake. Look at this place. Now this is a really cool ranch. Some friends of mine that I grew up with own this big ranch up here and they have these fishing lakes and they're all fly fishing only, which is something that I definitely don't complain about because I love, love, love fly fishing for trout. So I'm gonna try to teach you guys a lot as we go along today, how I'm doing it and the methods behind it and see if it's successful. See if the, all the information I give you is even worth a damn. So kayaks launched, grab the fly rod, let's go fishing. Okay little, come on, let's go. And away we go. 
Okay, so what I'm using today is a six weight fly rod. It's only about nine feet long, pretty basic setup. Anybody that wants to get into fly fishing, um, I'd say this is kind of a good rod to start with. You know, any real brand works. A lot of people I think are intimidated to get into fly fishing because one of the cost, two, just a, the fact that it's not super easy and it's not the easiest sport to learn. So. I like to say, go a little bit higher quality on a rod if you're gonna buy it. Don't break the bank, but get something a little bit nicer than what you would find it at Walmart or something like that. Cause it's gonna help you be a better caster and it's gonna help you learn how to fly fish quicker. So I'm going with my six weight fly rod today. I'm gonna tie what we call a woolly bugger on here. And I'll show you guys that in just a second. But I'm gonna go with a 10 pound bumper or a 10 pound leader here. Sorry, mom, I'm not supposed to use my teeth. And I'm gonna start the day off with my olive bugger. And I have a, a few different colors of, of flies here today, a few different styles too. I have these, these things that look like stone flies, and these things are a little bit more natural. Um, a lot of the flies, oh my god, I just about dropped them in the lake. A lot of these flies don't necessarily resemble a lot of things that might be in the lakes, but like these guys here, these are all naturally, these are bugs that are in the water right now. These are more like a leech pattern, a little, a little scud, they call them. Um, and these are actual leech patterns made out of schlop. And so I got the olives, I got blacks, I got basically basically a pretty simple variety of of flies here that i'm going to be using throughout the day and i'm just going to switch back and forth between them and see which one works best so i did bring a little bit lighter line out here on the on the water too just in case just in case these fish are being finicky but i heard that the fishing was good on this lake so i'm going to go with a little bit heavier line just in case i get a really nice one so i'm ready time to fish everybody Oh, not so fast. There we go. What is a day of fly fishing without being tangled? I don't know. It's not a day of fly fishing. So my goal is, flies on the water, it goes down. I'm using a sinking fly that has a tungsten head on it. So this thing sinks very fast. It's almost like a jig of sorts. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let that thing sink about it. Oh, I already got one. Got one, got one. Oh my God, on the fall, on the fall. This was, this is a success already, everybody. I got one. Oh, it feels like a good, oh my god, it's a huge one! <laughs> what a jump! So that was on the fall, everybody. I hadn't even stripped it yet. That thing was just falling down into the zone. Oh, he's gonna jump again. Oh, what a jump! <laughs> wow. Oh, he's going for it again. This fish is strong. Oh god, oh god, he's gonna break me. He's gonna break my heart. Don't break my heart, my achy, breaky heart out here. Yeah, buddy, that's what I'm talking about, little. Now what a way to start the day. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer to all you guys out there. Oh God, oh God, he's running, he's running. Wow, what a giant to start the day. And this thing is so flippin' strong. Oh my God, yeah! Oh! What a way to start the day, ladies and gents. I gotta get all this line out of, oh God, oh he's gonna break me. He's gonna break me, I'm stuck. I'm stuck, I'm all over myself. Oh God, oh God, this is bad, this is bad. I gotta get to my reel here. There we go. Now we're on. This is a big fish, ladies and gentlemen. This is a big fish. All right, everyone, I'm gonna come over to the bank so I can show you guys. We got the, the good camera on the bank here. I wanna get a really good look at this for the camera for you. Show you what, what we have in store for today, what this lake has to offer. Man, this is a nice fish. How about it? That was truly probably my first cast of the day. I hit the water, let that thing sink, and the olive bugger, it came through. This may be a, a bit of an ordeal, but I think it's worth it. We want to get a good look at this fish for the camera here. And Little, of course, wants to lick it. He wants to lick it real bad. Oh, he's trying to get me in the trees. He's trying to get me in the trees. Okay, I got him. I got him. Oh, wow. Wow. Stay, Little. Stay. Holy moly, everyone. Look at that. What a way to start my day out. First fish on the fly this spring even. And just look at this thing. Oh, chunk of monka. Look at that. Oh, everything you could ask for in a trout right there. So neat. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get him back. I'm just gonna pop that hook, let him swim away. I'm using barbless hooks out here today so that we don't harm these fish. See you later, buddy. Oh, everyone, that's a good start. That's a good start. I need to get back out there and cast again because this is going well. All right, here we go. Back over to the honey hole. 
Again, today has just started, everyone. I have barely even made a cast. I've been messing with my reel. I have an absolute mess of stuff. I told you not to skimp on buying fly gear, but this one, this fly rod of mine has been bouncing around in the back of the pickup for a while. So I gotta say, I think it might be time for a new fly reel. But it still works, as you saw. It still catches fish. And a lot of times with the fly fishing, the nice part is you really don't use your reel a whole lot. So you can skimp on the reel, go with a nicer rod, and still have success and go out there and catch fish. So this is neat. I'm digging it. Oh, fish, got him. Oh, yep, another nice one too. Another really nice one. Oh boy. Oh, there he goes. Oh man. What am I gonna do here, everyone? What am I gonna do here, my fishy friends? I'm gonna tow him over to you so we can show you again what we got going. Shit. Oh, he's trying to go for my motor. He knows better, he knows what's going on. This isn't his first rodeo. So weed, everyone. Man, this doesn't get any better. Does not get any better than this. I got line everywhere. I'm a horrible fly fisherman right now. So as we start to go over this, and I've, I've, I catch a couple more fish, I'm gonna get the fish out of the way, get them out of my system. But I'm actually gonna talk to you guys and, and one, go over a cast a little bit, and then two, go over the presentation of your fly. So far, it's just been, they've been taking it on the fall. I think these fish are just hungry and mean and they wanna eat. But sometimes they can be finicky. This kind of fishing can be very tough, um, whether on, a, again, a private lake or in a public lake. I've had just as good of fishing in a public area, but it's more about your method and the flies you use and presenting that fly correctly. So let's see this guy. Oh, he's a, he's, a, he's a wild animal. He is a wild animal. Wow, he ate the heck out of that thing. Look at him, everyone. Wow, second fish of the day. Another beauty. The gills on that thing are impressive. Oh, see you later. He gone, he gone. All right, now let's go over how to fly fish. Yeah, right at the camera. There we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna keep my tip nice and low, and I'm gonna go over the cast here in a little bit. But what I like to do when I'm presenting these flies is keep that tip low and be able to see the, the, the definition in your line where you have those little bows and those little bellies from your line being wrapped around your reel. And the easiest way to tell that you have a fish or are getting bit is just really watching the angle of the line. If it's going straight and you see the line moving and pulling, you know you have a fish biting it. If it's sitting there stagnant and it's got those bends in it, you know that you're, you're not on anything. You're not either on bottom, you're not actually hooking a fish yet. And you can tell that it's almost your strike indicator in a way. And so that's what I'm using. That's what I'm paying attention to as I'm going here. And about every three seconds or so, I'm letting that fly fall. So I'm going strip, strip, let it fall. Maybe three strips the next time, and then I'm going to let it fall. Then I might go two or three strips. And just very, very abstract motions. Have that bug down there just going up and then going down. And then going out again and then going down. And that is what's going to be most important in getting these fish's attention. I'm getting bit. Get ready. Get ready. I have one. He's on there. Oh, got him. Oh, he came off. Yeah, there it is, everyone. That was the magic cast. I'm going to hit my spot lock on this kayak here. That is the coolest thing about these things. You can hit that little anchor button and it'll hold me right in this position and won't let me leave once I got a bite. I absolutely love fly fishing from these kayaks. It has completely changed the game. I compare it to like a mini bass boat. If you have the chance to rent one of these or, or go take them out and actually go and fish a lake or a pond with them, I gotta say they're one of the coolest little fishing utensils I've ever had. One of my favorite boats that I own at this point. Oh God, that was a big one. I got a cast over there. That was a big one, everyone. Okay. And I must say that's probably my favorite part about fly fishing for these fish especially when you're in a lake like this is because you can so quickly maneuver your line and cast to where the fish are like that one just rolled behind me i watched it roll he's cruising he's on he's on a mission again he's actually hunting so to be able to rip my line out of the water really quick and then turn and cast right where i saw that fish can be such a good edge in catching these fish and staying right on top of them as they're like circling around you and hunting so almost i swear sometimes i can catch more fish doing oh my god there's one right there i'm surrounded i'm surrounded they are everywhere. Oh, got him. oh, it's a big one. Oh, we're all bent up. We're bent up. We're bent up. He's coming at me. He's coming at me. 
Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, there he goes. Now he's awake. Now he's awake. You said it, little. You said it, bud. You said it. Woohoo! Sweet. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, man. What a lively one. So cool. This one is so pretty, too. It's got some of this little bit of. Oh, oh, oh. Looks like he's got a little bit of this, like, fungus growing on him, and that can come. I think from these lakes, but oh my God, look at the color of that fish's gills. What a cool fish. And a lot of that, that kind of fungus stuff growing sometimes can be due to just the temperature of the water. You know, it gets really hot in this area of Oregon that we're in uh, in the summertime. So sometimes those fish can be susceptible to, to different diseases and different stuff that can cause them some harm. So let that one go quickly. Let's get back to casting. Oop, there's one right there. He just surfaced. Oh, right on target. Nailed him. Oh, wow, I just got hit so hard. He actually yanked the line out of my fingers. Come on, come back for it. It's running away from you. It's running away from you. The fly thinks it's better than you. You better show it who's boss, Mr. Fish. Show it who's boss. Oh, that's a big one. That's the biggest one yet. That's a big fish, everyone. Oh man, it was like laying into a ton of bricks. Oh wow, that's a good one, Little. That's a really good one, Lidman. What do you think, dude? What do you think? That's a good one. Oh, that was such a good hook set, my fishy friends. I felt that thing take, I let him swim with it, and I just gave it to him. Oh wow, that's a good fish, everyone. That is a great, great trout I have on the line here. Oh God, oh God, he's making a run. He's making a run for it. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get him to hand here. What a neat fish. Wow. Come to Papa's. Come to Papa's. Yo soy Papa. Look at this thing. Oh my God, it looks like a cutthroat. It is a cutthroat. It's a cut bow. Now this thing is actually a mixture. They, they spawn these things together, mainly for lakes like this. And these fish can be super resilient and strong is why they do this again, because when you're in a lake itself and it's not a very big body of water, these fish are very susceptible to the water temperature and everything. So look at this fish, everybody. What a special creature. Look at him, look at the spots on his forehead. Looks like a, like a osprey or something or some sort of eagle almost got him. And this is absolutely the best one I've caught so far. Let's get him back. Okay. So cool. Later, buddy. Into the depths. Oh, trying to break my rod. Oh, okay. So while I'm over here next to you guys, I'm gonna go over a quick casting tutorial and see if we can hook a fish while we're doing it. Just to kind of show you guys out there who may have never casted a fly rod before, how to so that you can get into this fun sport of fly fishing. It is truly one of my very favorite ways to fish for trout. And especially this time of year, you get out here, the sun's a shining, the birds are chirping, and you're catching big fish like this on natural presentations like we have. So, so let's stand up, let's get you guys casting. Okay, so to start us off here, there's a couple basic rules that go into learning how to fly cast. One of it is don't force it. Use your rod and use your line. Two is don't break your wrist. Three is keep a consistent motion. And again, do not force the fly out there. A lot of times I find that people who aren't big burly dudes are a lot better at learning how to fly cast because they know the finesse and they know how to use their rod. The flexibility of this rod is what allows us to cast our line so well. So what I like to do first off, I like to start with about 10 to 15 feet of line. You just throw it out of the tip there. And I have a pretty heavy bug on here to start with. So if you are just learning, maybe just tie a piece of yarn or use a little dry fly on the end of there without the hook so that you can practice this cast and, and genuinely get it out there easily. I just had a fish on and I wasn't doing anything. So what's most important again is that you act like you have a brace on, like you have a two by four taped to your arm, I always like to say. And what I mean by that is when you cast, it has nothing to do with your wrist going back and forth. What it has to do with is your shoulder movement. So you go answer the phone and then you hang it up. And then you answer the phone and then you hang it up. And you can see as I do that motion, my wrist never moves. I keep my wrists locked. It's almost the rod butt is actually stuck into my forearm. And I do that same motion. What's most importantly is as you go back, you don't go forward until your line has completely gone all the way back. And what I mean by that is make sure that that line goes all the way behind you so that you have the weight of the fly line to load your rod and fire it forward correctly. So what I mean is your back cast should be identical to your forward cast. There should be no difference. And it, what the tempo is, it's slow, fast slow, fast. 
And you can see how with each motion as I go forward, I give it just that little whip at the end, which is my fast, which bends that rod tip and allows that fly to fly out there. So again, great way to begin or start. Don't let any more line out. Don't use both hands. Just use one hand and you answer the phone and you hang it up. You answer the phone and then you hang it up. And just continue that motion. And as you start to gain that confidence and you can feel your rod working and you feel it loading and going back and forth, then you can start to strip out some more line and allow yourself to cast a little bit more line out at each time. So you'll watch here. So I have this little belly line now that I've, that I've got below me. This is what I'm gonna try to cast. So I'm gonna go back, answer the phone, and I'm gonna hang it up. And I'm gonna answer the phone, and then I'm gonna hang it up. And I'm gonna answer the phone, and when I hang it up, I'm gonna let go of that line and let that, that movement and let that momentum of my line flying out of the rod tip carry and carry the rest of that line out and into the lake. So if you guys have never seen my other YouTube channel, it's a, it's a conglomerate of a few friends of mine. It's called Addicted Fishing, and we have a ton of content on there that teaches you how to go out and fish, and as well as go out and fly fish like you see here. So go check out some of those links in the description. I'll try to help you guys learn how to do the certain methods that we fish with into future episodes of Stay Fishy, but if you really want the nitty gritty on how to fish, go check out that page, Addicted Fishing, here on YouTube. Oh, there's one right there, oh my God. You ready, everybody? You ready for this? Are you ready for this? Man, there's a lot. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm sitting here, guys, just in awe watching all these fish shark and roll all across the lake here. And I was uh, almost caught me off guard here. And then old Trout Zilla here decided to smack my. Oh, my God, what a jump. Oh, I wish you were in the boat, huh, little? Wish you was in the boat. Heck yes, everybody. My. Oh, the triploid jump. Oh, wee. Wow. Okay, I'm bringing him around town. We're gonna bring him all around town. Oh, the cartwheel! What a fish. Wow, that one's even super unique in itself. Super, super healthy one this time too. Just look at this fish. Oh, he's talking. Did you hear him? He said, put me back. Olive bugger is spicy. Oh, wow, what did he just puke up? Check this out. It's an actual leech. Right when I released that fish, he coughed. And I heard it, you all heard him go, he made that weird sound, and then look what he just coughed up. It is a real life leech. Look at this thing. The little sucker on it, the little tail. Wow, how crazy. Wouldn't want to be swimming in this pond, but because I just saw that, let's do something crazy here. Obviously that fly is working, but I have a fly in my box right here that is gonna look even more identical to that. Check this thing out. If that doesn't look like a leech, I don't know what does. It's got that little head on there, a little bit, little bit of weight on it. I've always used leech patterns over the years to try to catch these fish, but I've never actually seen a leech be eaten by a trout. But apparently, they do it. Okay, let's see how fast this works. Well, it seems the olive bugger may be the obvious choice. Might be switching back to it here. Tried to go with this black leech to kind of mimic what they were actually eating in here, but turns out just having that different presentation, something that looks a little different, and maybe the, that black leech resembles somewhat of a different color underneath the water surface where they think like that's a juvenile one or something where it has that lighter, ooh, there's a fish right there. Perfect, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, come on. Oh God, they are everywhere over here in the center, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the middle of a hot bite. Oh, one's just swimming off with it. One is swimming off with it. I was texting, I was on my phone, everyone, and Schwapper got him. Oh, 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 baby. Oh, that thing had it for a country mile. Wow, that is another beautiful fish. Holy goodness. Wow. Wowzer McNowzers, everyone. Look at this one. Ta-da! The mystery fish. Boy, he really liked that fly. Should have gently get that thing out of there without hurting him. I don't know if you guys can see this, but look inside this fish's mouth. It is full of what we call chronomids. Can you see it all? Absolutely stuffed to the gills. These things are eating so good in here. I'm gonna give him a little breath. Actually, I'm just gonna let him go. That was really, really cool, guys. 
the way when I had to take the fly out, he actually just coughed up some more bait again, and it was just solid bugs. All these little tiny microscopic, basically they looked like little shrimp in a way, and the thing was just stuffed full of them. So these things are not going hungry, that's for sure. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. That was cool, everybody. The old flip flop, there you go. That's what we'll call that one. We're gonna call it quits here in just a few minutes and head to do some other adventures for the, for the day. Um, but so far, it has been an absolutely perfect day of fly fishing. I couldn't have asked for anything more. It's been so cool and so much fun. And these lakes are awesome. If you guys want to come fish these lakes, it's called the Justice and Ranch. And they're cool enough. I've known these people my whole life. And they're awesome enough to let us come out here and, and fish. And there's really cool cabins you can stay at. You can camp out here. You can do all kinds of stuff. So if you guys are interested in coming and checking out some of this fishing, it's fun. Again, it's a little it's a little bit further out than you normally have to go to go trout fishing. But obviously, as you can see, it's absolutely worth it. And I'm having a blast. So great place to learn how to fly fish as well. Man, that one really wanted it. Look at how perfect that trout is. Look at that. Just Troutzilla at its finest. Okay, little guy. Thanks so much for playing. See you later. Well, the kayaks are loaded. What an incredible little morning sesh out here on the lakes. I gotta say, that was probably some of the best fly fishing I've seen in a long time. I wanna see some comments below once again whether or not you guys like this or not. I had a blast filming this today and I hope you guys liked learning a little bit about fly fishing. But now, it's lunchtime. And what's on the menu? We got nothing less than pickled quail eggs from Bob's Sporting Goods. And I brought a little of my very own canned salmon. So I'm gonna munch out here for a few minutes. Then we're gonna hit the road off to our next adventure but we have an incredible dinner planned and i'll give you a little hint it's a tomahawk steak and we're going to cook it over the fire so you guys got to check this thing out look at this freaking thing yeah that's what we're eating i can't wait so let's munch out let's crack a beer together cheers to you guys for being here today and enjoying this incredible adventure <sighs> let's snack oh my god magic in a jar heavenly just heavenly i was thinking about this when i was looking at this i was like man what do you call this lunch bad breath <laughs> mm. all right good little energy boost let's hit the road So I'm making my fire pit here and I kept hearing these wings flapping and I look up on the hill and there's a bunch of wild turkeys flying up into the trees where they roost for the night. That's where they go to bed is high up in the pine tree. So we're going to be listening to them gobble the whole time we're cooking. Enjoy the audio. You know, I must say, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing quite as satisfying as cutting kindling. It's a dangerous operation, but my, once you kind of get the hang of it, it is so much fun. Perfect. So the wood we're cooking with tonight is actually juniper wood, which is pretty common in desert areas like this, that high desert atmosphere. Uh, and it has a really, really nice smell to it. They actually use it to make gin, so it has that really, really kind of piney, kind of uh, real herbal taste to it. And I think it's going to go really well with the steak. So some of you out there might be saying, no, you can't do that. but. I think it's gonna taste good and I love the smell and the taste of juniper. So let's get this fire going. Got my trusty pine pitch. That's what I'm gonna use to start this. This stuff is pretty cool. This is the base of a pine tree, so it holds all the sap from hundreds of years of growing. And once it dies and falls over, all that sap stores in the base. And you can cut it up and get these awesome fire starters. So I want to hear from you guys, those turkeys get me going. 
I love the sound of those because I love to hunt them and they're one of the tastiest meals that I've ever had in my life. So I want to see some comments below on what you guys would think of some hunting content. Probably won't show guns, probably won't show much of the killing, but just the, the concept and the, the process of going out and harvesting wild animals like that. It's something that I've done my whole life, but of course here on YouTube some of that stuff is kind of a little bit harder to, to expose because YouTube doesn't like it, they don't like guns, so on and so forth. So let me know in the comments down below whether or not you guys would like to see some hunting content in the future. But that brings to mind the idea and the plan for tomorrow. One thing that I love to do that we really haven't got to do on Stay Fishy yet is go rock hounding. So in the last episode I shed hunted, I got a lot of cool feedback from you guys that you liked it. But I want to know if you guys want to see rock hounding or shed hunting tomorrow for future episodes. So we're going to make that decision in the morning. we got a great option for both in this area. And I love both things. So what, tell me what you guys would rather see more of. And again, drop some comments on what you would think of some hunting content. So. Now this bad boy was gifted to me by somebody that I collabed with recently on my other channel, Addicted Fishing, that I talked about earlier, Chef David from Live Fire Republic, and he asked that I shout out the place that he got these sent from, and it's Dynasty Selection. I believe they're out of Nebraska, but this is one of the most beautiful steaks I think I've ever had my hands on. So I'm gonna do my normal thing. I'm gonna cook it just how I normally would. I'm gonna go over the fire for just a little bit, get that thing going, get that sear, and then I'm gonna go into the pan over some butter and lock that juiciness in. And then we're gonna go serve it to our friends and enjoy this awesome night. So this is the seasoning that he gave me. It's a cowboy rub by Weber. And I know that man, if you watch any of that stuff on Live Fire Republic, he goes pretty heavy on his seasonings. But it's because none of these seasonings that he uses are really salt based. So you're not adding a ton of salt or other, anything other than really flavor to these steaks when you're doing this. So that being the case, I'm gonna go kind of my normal, normal amount on there. Add a little extra Montreal and she's ready to go. And then in the pan, I'm gonna render down some butter. Once that steak gets that good sear and that good smoke from the fire, I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit of seasoned butter. And that is gonna lock in all those juices and all that flavor, and it is gonna be mouth-watering good. Let's get the steak on the fire. Everybody, that's the sound of dinner. Perfection. Please tell me down below what you think of this steak, everybody. I'm pretty proud of myself, and thank you so much to Chef David for leaving this thing with me. It's not going to go to waste. We're gonna hood this thing, take it over to the house, cut this bad boy up, and start sharing with our friends. Whoa. So juicy, so good. Better try it. Make sure it's not poisonous. I think we did it. That's what we call buckaroon. Till tomorrow, everybody. Good night. Whew. Good morning, my fishy friends. We survived the night, and boy, it was a good one. Today, it's gonna be a cool day. I asked you guys last night whether you wanted to see shed hunting or rock hounding today. And the obvious choice in my book, because of where we are, is rock hounding. So that's what we're gonna do. I got a canyon behind me. I have some, some intel that there are 
deposits of thunder eggs or crystals and different sort of things like that in this area um, it takes a certain kind of geology to find this stuff it's basically older earth and these plateaus have been exposed over the years just by the tectonic plates moving and or just erosion or, or different things like that that exposed the bedrock and that earth so we're gonna head up this canyon follow our hearts follow our dreams and see what we can dig out I got my little pickaxe here and I've been rock hounding my whole life and out in this part of the states of course there are quite a few areas you can find this kind of stuff um, some in particular are private some like where we are today are unfound uh, so it's kind of the in the sense of discovery and prospecting that you kind of just point one direction start walking and hope you find something so we got our little fire axe to dig with we got our lambrafides and we got this beautiful canyon let's go find some rocks Hi-ho, hi-ho, to find the rocks we go. With my axe and a pick and my little dog do. Hi-ho, 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 hi-ho. So what we're looking for everybody is pieces of the earth that are exposed that are showing some sort of material that what we're looking for. And a lot of times it's only one little sliver of land in a big canyon. So the way I like to start and how I like to basically just go out investigating a place that might have these is by walking the lowest point, the river bottom, where all the erosion and anything that sloughs off of the hillsides will fall down into and that'll be your first sign that there's something worth looking for there. You'll find little bits and pieces of crystals or opals or basically bits and pieces of what you're looking for in those river bottoms and then you start working up from there. So I'm gonna make my way up this river bottom, see if I can find any places where erosion has taken place and washed away some material that might be what we're looking for so it is a beautiful spring day out here i feel so lucky on this trip it has been so much fun good fishing good friends Ooh, what happened here little looks like old uh elky got into a little scrap with a kitty cat good thing i brought the axe so already I'm seeing some interesting colored rocks. You see this? What I think a lot of this is is just like fragments of basalt. And basalt is, is a fast, a rapid cooled lava rock, basically from a, a volcanic eruption that touches water and rapidly cools and creates these columns and then erodes very easily. The stuff just falls apart. So what we have to find is perlite, which is a kind of, kind of very porous material they actually used to make acoustics. They used to put perlite inside of like radios and subs and different things to make that acoustic sound. So we'll look for evidence of that, I'll stick to this river bottom and see if the creator leads us to some thunder eggs. Let's go over here. What is this? What is this? Everyone, we're in the spot. This is a good sign. So this is like the internals. This is a, a sort of thunder egg, a geode style of thunder egg that is obviously broken or been in a fort in a fire or something that broke it open the heat caused it to crack and fall apart but this is a good sign this is our first little bit of material that we found you can see those incredible colors look at that some quartz some opal absolutely gorgeous oh my goodness that's a really good sign you guys i did not think i, I really had the all the ambition in the world I had all the hopes in the world that we would actually find something coming up this little canyon here. And like I said, I'd got a tip earlier that there was some sort of, of crystals and stuff in this canyon, but I didn't expect to find something that fast. So number one in the pocket, I'm taking that bad boy home. That is incredibly beautiful. So now that I found that, I'm gonna start looking like left and right. Obviously this thing is, is kind of rolled down the river over time, but I'm gonna try to find some cut banks somewhere that the river's eroded and maybe start digging a little bit and see if we can see if we can find what we're really looking for. And that is a whole egg. So, oh, what is this? This looks good. This looks promising. So you see this whole hillside up here. That was flat and it kind of has, you see that little bit of white color, all the specks up here on the hillside. All right. So nothing up on the hill. So I came back down into the creek bottom where we were finding our first stuff. And I see these cattle trails over here and a road right above. And a lot of times when they move that earth or, or cattle or, or any sort of animal or elk or anything has these game trails, they'll expose a lot of erosion and expose that earth that'll ultimately show you those thunder eggs. And so I'm gonna check this out. This looks like a really nice little sloughed off hillside. 
It's time to do some investigation. What's this? That's kind of interesting. You can see how these rocks here have some interesting color to them. This is a totally different style of rock. Oh my God, what is that? What is that? What is that? Looks like. Guys, I think that, let's wash it off really quick. I think that is an egg. That is our first, oh, oh, it totally is. Look at this, look at the other side of it. The opal's exposed. Some of that crystal inside. Oh my God, we found one. We found one, we found one, we found one, a whole one. Okay, I gotta start digging here. So this this must have come from this little sloughed off area right here. The cattle or, or elk or whatever must have kicked this thing off of this little dirt embankment and it rolled down. But nonetheless, there's our first real thunder egg, everybody. Let's comment below what you think. Wash that thing off. It's all dirty. I'm getting stepped on. Wow. Yes. Yes. Success. We have a real thunder egg in our hands. Let's start digging. Okay, so I just went just up the hill. The first thunder egg was right there behind Little. So I'm going to get right into this bank here. You can see how this, again, these cattle have exposed all this stuff. I can already see a little bit of material. So I'm just going to kind of work across this bank, see if I can expose anything and maybe kick up another thunder egg here. Let's do it. What's this? Interesting. do give myself a little layer to work with here so that I can look at this earth a little bit better. I can work my way back over here. Not seeing really anything yet. Oh my god, what is that? What is that? That's a real one. That's a real thunder egg, everybody. Oh my god, look at how perfect it is. Oh my god, I found one. I found one. I found one. A whole one. I gotta wash this off and show you guys. Oh my goodness. I did not expect to actually find a really good one out here. I, I thought maybe we'd find some bits and pieces or just some deposits, but we found a real freaking thunder egg, everyone. Just in the side of the bank, in the cow trail. Oh my God. It is absolutely perfect. Little dirty, but we'll wash it off at home, but you can see the banding and that egg shape to it, you can see the lines of the crystals here, and pretty much you can just tell by the way it is that it's a thunder egg. But I can't believe we found one, oh my God. You can kind of see just the hints of the crystal sticking out there. We'll see more of it later on, but I already know what I'm gonna do. I have a saw at home and so I can cut these things, but what I want from you guys out there watching, I want you to try to get this video to 5,000 likes and I'll cut this thing live on camera. If you want to see the inside of that thing, you better be hitting that button. That is so cool. I cannot believe we just found one. How perfect. So thunder eggs, it's actually a Native American tale that two mountains in this region were, were erupting simultaneously. And the, the story goes that they were fighting over the adjacent mountain. One mountain was the other mountain's girlfriend and the other guy across the river was trying to steal it. And so as those mountains were erupting, that lava was flying back and forth, creating these thunder eggs. It's not exactly the story of how these are created, but it's my favorite one. We gotta keep digging. I cannot believe we just found one. Normally there's more eggs right next to each other, so I'm gonna keep digging in the same spot. What is that? Not one, it's not one. Oof, that scared me. Everything's psyching me out now, everybody. I'm going over here, maybe start digging in around this root. Oh my God, there's one on the surface and it's huge. Oh my freaking God. Look at that everybody, it's as big as my hand. Oh my God, right on the surface. It was sitting right under this branch. Look at that and it's light almost. I think this one is hollow, hold on. Let's see if you guys can hear this. Someone's home. Oh my God, we just found another one. That is incredible. I need to wash this thing off. Let's go look at this thing. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so freaking cool. Best day ever. Sitting under a cow patty. Oh my God. You guys better. So you can almost see the crystals on the outside here. See them kind of showing once that dirt's removed. 
you guys better start hitting that thumbs up because I want to cut these things open. I have a lapidary saw at home that I'll be able to put these in and cut them open and we'll all be able to see what's inside together. It'll be like Christmas morning. Yes! Well, I'm breaking a sweat. That got me really excited. We've been digging and scouring this hillside for about the last hour now and haven't found any more, but I'd say that was a successful venture here. Wow, see some comments below you guys on what you think of this rock hounding stuff. It's one of my very favorite things to do and there's not a lot of people that get to go enjoy it or experience it. I know a lot of people like to hike the rivers and pick up agates and different things, but this is my favorite, running around in the desert, finding beautiful pieces like this that, we've, that we got today. What a cool day. The prizes, my prize possessions, my precious. Well, surprise, surprise, we came home instead. I got so excited over these rocks that I wanted to come home and instead of digging roots and stuff today and making this video even longer, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of my rock collection and the thunder eggs that I found previous to this so that it'll get you excited for what we just found today together. So let's go check it out. Just pulled in the driveway. What an awesome adventure that was. That ranch out there is so freaking cool. There's so many fish in all those lakes and there's a ton of lakes to fish. So again, if you guys wanna go out and play on that property, be sure to get a hold of those guys. It's an amazing place and it's in a, in a beautiful place in Oregon. So one that many people have not seen before, but dun, 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 my rock collection. So first off, actually what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get some good lighting in here so you guys can see. So these are my prized possession rocks, little, do you like them? Yes, yes, I love them. So we got a little bit of petrified wood, we got thunder eggs, we got different stuff from all over the country, but these are these are some of my pride and joys. Everybody, these are my favorite rocks in the world and these are, are the thunder eggs. So again, you kind of see what they look like naturally. These are all from different areas. So different areas all look a little bit different. And that's kind of the beauty of the thunder egg is any part of the country you find them, whether it's north, south, east, or west, they'll always look different. So a lot of old rock hounds can tell exactly where a lot of these ones even might be from, uh, if there's any old thunder egg enthusiasts out there watching this video, but pretty darn cool. Got all kinds of different colors and different banding. These are from some special areas that I hold dear to my heart. And that is kind of the, the most fun part of the thunder egg hunting is the areas that it takes you to and the adventure that it endures. You know, just going and walking up a canyon, setting your dial one direction and being, and just in a sense prospecting um, and going out and looking for these things. There are public areas that you can find thunder eggs all over the Northwest and in, you know, the South down, down by uh, Utah, Nevada, all those areas like that have a lot of this different kind of crystal stuff. But let me show you how I actually cut these things. So I told you guys, if you get this video to 5,000 likes, which is not hard to do. So for those of you that are out there watching this video on their TV or something, you'd have to just go through the, the really grueling process of taking out your phone and then you can like the video from your phone. So you, a lot of times you can't like stuff on YouTube from your TV. So those of you out there that are trying to support it, trying to get this video to 5,000 likes, go to your phone and hit that like button instead of watching it on your TV. You can watch it on your TV, but just go like it from, from the, uh, from the old cell phone. So this is my rock saw. Bum, bum, bum. Now this badass piece of equipment is what cuts these things. So we got a thunder egg still in there, partially cut. I actually bent this blade up. So in order to finish this video for you guys and, and do that, you can see this thing has a nice little curvature in it there. That's gonna make a really weird bevel on the rock. So I'm gonna have to order a new one for you guys if you do get this video to 5,000 likes. So what an incredible adventure. There's my rock saw. There's my collection of thunder eggs that I've already found. And I cannot wait to cut these ones open with you guys because I think you're gonna really, really, really like it. So with all that being said, I wanna thank all you so, so much for being with us on this journey today. I had a ton of fun over there on the ranch and I can't wait to go back. And I'm planning the next video, we're gonna take off in about a day here to go do another one. And I think we're gonna make it kind of based around rock counting because I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there are already gonna love this video. And so I kind of wanna piggyback off of this video because I know you guys are gonna like these rock hounding videos. Um, of course, mixed in with a little bit of fishing, a little bit of food, a little bit of friends and a great, great adventure. Thank you all so much for being here. You all stay fishy. We'll see you next time.